Loma Linda, California. It's home to the venomous residents of an ancient desert world, but with a new challenge as the human population pushes out the edges of greater LA. Sean Bush's team is on alert, improvising the response to an enemy that defies the logic of science. They must learn as they go. No textbooks can prepare them for life here on the front line, home of the Venom ER. As the weather warms above 70 degrees, the snake season is underway. And Memorial Day, the first big holiday of the season, will bring people into their territory. The air ambulance team is ready. Memorial Day weekend. This kicks off the summer season, and uh, it's the first weekend that uh, everybody gets out and gets wildly crazy. And I refer to it as everybody starts going into the stupid zone. In snake territory, Respect and common sense are key to survival. But most people are just having fun in the wild or the water, and the Venom team fears the worst. Craig Dyer and his crew are on duty. It's a poignant time for flight nurse Steve Ellis. Spent four years on active duty through Desert Storm and all that, and so I know that you know Memorial Day weekend is one of those few weekends that we honor those that have served. The Venom ER is gearing up. One duty doctor is Rob Steele. I think this weekend uh, the beds will be filled, people will be in chairs, and uh, we are going to be running out of space to do anything. Um, this weekend is going to be definitely very busy. San Bernardino County has hot desert, forested mountains, and cool lakes. They're a real holiday draw but they're also snake territory. Many people are fascinated by snakes. Young kids are drawn to their slithering movement. Older kids are intrigued by the power, the speed, the danger. But this is a long way from medical care. Here, a bite means a manic mountain drive in search of help crying out to the forest rangers for first aid, calling an ambulance from the nearest town, and with the venom starting its destruction, time is tissue. Alerting the hospital, emergencies don't stop on a holiday, scrambling a helicopter, paging Dr. Sean Bush. In a race to the hospital and its high-tech ER, that's how 14-year-old Chris Pettis got here. He's in the thick of the action in the pediatric ER. Sean Bush and Dr. Debbie Washke are on the case. Did it just get you with one fang? Yeah. I just see a, sing I see a single fang puncture wound right here. It's a tiny injection, but the venom has already hit the muscles in his finger. But it hurts when I squeeze, right? Right, right here? There, yeah. Right there? How about here? Yeah. How about up here? Mm -hmm. Stops right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's mark it now. Let's just say he's down to here. Uh -huh. yeah, we're just making an even. Okay. His fingers are kind of twitching, mm -hmm. and that's a little characteristic of the Southern Pacific rattlesnake, and that's the type of snake that probably bit him from around okay. Silverwood. The local swelling shows the progress of the venom in Chris's body. His muscles are contracting uncontrollably. Do you have a bunch of rattles? Could you hear them rattle, or did it have a little button on the end? Not that I know. Don't know. All right. And he got away. Yeah. OK. Sean can tell from the symptoms what kind of snake was involved. And the Southern Pacific is the species that most concerns him. Even a small one is a dangerous animal to encounter. Like, I was just walking back, like, from the water. And then, like, it just bit me. Like, I was just trying to pick it up. And then it beat me after that. How'd you try to pick him up? By its neck. Okay, for the two. Yeah. Okay, so we're starting a medicine for you. It's called anti-venom. And it stops the damage from being done. Chris has broken Sean's first law. Respect the snake. Never pick it up. Do you have any questions for me? All right. But I think you're going to live.
He'll need fluids to support his circulation, counteract the swelling, and keep his kidneys working. An hour later, Chris's airways, his chest and lungs are checked. Okay. The treatment must be stepped up. Now we do need a second IV. Yeah, we do need a second IV, please. His parents are due soon, and the team will monitor the battle between the venom and anti-venom. But then, uh, as we get the anti once we get the anti-venom in, you can just check like every hour or two. Every hour or two, okay. And I, you have the snake bite guidelines there too. Chris is in the pediatric area, but he's old enough to know picking up a rattlesnake is not a smart idea. Now, this guy is practically an adult. I mean, he's 14, he's a big kid. We treat him almost like we would treat an adult. So it's really not that different. His mom, Angelica, arrives and does what moms do. What do you think? You uh -huh. picked it up and what? Just grabbed it. And you didn't know no. that that's Chris. How many times? I don't know. I just, like, got it. What were you guys doing? Walking around. And weren't you told not to do that? Huh? Weren't you told not to walk around? To it's a lucky escape. Angelica's relief is tinged with anxiety. Mm -hmm. He's been warned plenty, plenty times not to be playing with objects that he's not familiar with, including snakes. Um, but uh, I'm just, I'm just glad he's okay, and it hasn't, you know. It wasn't very bad. All right, so how are you doing now? I'm good. Let's see your finger again. No. All right. It hasn't progressed past this line. And your first dose of Crofab is almost in. Your labs look good, so I think that, uh, I think we're gonna put you on the maintenance dose now, and we'll watch you overnight. Kids like Chris are drawn to mystery and danger, and the allure of snakes is irresistible. He's been wanting one for the longest time as a pet, and I was kind of iffy about it because they're not, uh, you can't predict whether they're going to bite you or not. I mean, you don't know what will provoke them or, you know, anything like that. So that's what kind of pushed me away from letting him have one. But hopefully this, you know, he learned his lesson with this. That lesson will include a night in the ER, but he won't be alone. I don't have any plans to leave him tonight. It's my baby. <laughs> He's one lucky kid. The maintenance dose of Crofab works through the night, and Chris creates only minor worries for night shift nurse Gigi Rodriguez. He's been wonderful. His swelling's gone down. He's moving his finger. He's had no problems at all. He's been eating like crazy, and he, um, I've been, you know, we're watching for bleeding, and he's eating Cheetos, and I didn't know this, and his gum, his mouth had red all over, and I said, your gum's bleeding? And he said, no. So I had some Cheetos. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Chris, how you doing, man? Cool. So, did he swell up anymore? Or? No. Let's take a look. Well, that looks a little better, actually. This is kind of, this may blister on you right here. You hurt into your arm up here? Mm -mm. No? Anything else? And I told you I'd have a surprise for you. So here it is, man. You get the Snake Bite Survivor T-shirt, man. Because you survived. It's no badge of honor. More a reminder that snakes are dangerous. I got some instructions to go over with you and with your mom. I guess his friends would say that he, uh, he was pretty, um, dumb <laughs> for reaching for it because I don't think they would have done it. I mean, they would have had the sense to run away, but uh, not Christopher. My friends didn't tell me, they told me don't pick up the snake, but I did, I didn't listen. So I was wrong for myself. I feel dumb for doing it though. But hopefully he's learned the value of respect and the t-shirt will be a reminder of how lucky he was. As Chris goes back to being a teenager, the pagers go off again as an ambulance brings in Christine Guillaume, another victim of a Southern Pacific rattlesnake. Oh, that's right. Thank you. They're clean. I just put them on. Dr. Westcott, right. Dr. Bush. It's a team job. And with Sean is Chief Resident Kelly Westcott. On a busy weekend like this, hundreds of ER staff members may be involved, but Sean Bush is in the middle of it all. What's your name? Christine. Christine. Bring it back a little bit. 
you have any other medical problems, Sorry, Christine? No, no. Your other ones, allergic to penicillin. Where's the snake flash? Right there. Any pain there when we touch it? Yeah, when you touch it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a concern. Earlier in the season, a leg bite led to the first fatal case this year. Sean will keep a close eye on any developments. It's a difficult case with a strange twist when Venom ER returns on Animal Planet. Christine Guillaume has been bitten by a Southern Pacific rattlesnake. Her leg is swollen, and Sean needs to track the venom progression. Okay, I'm gonna mark that right there. And what time you got? 1855. We'll just call it 19. Okay. How does that sound? Sounds great. All righty, and what happened today? I was going from the outside, stepping in, and I, I felt something biting me, so I shook my leg, and that came out. It came off my leg. I mean, the my snake feet. did? Uh huh. You saw the snake? Well, that's how I saw it because it got off. Uh huh. Okay. The snake was in the garage, the huh? That's why they're behind. So, basically, history of asthma. History of, history of asthma? Christine's responding well, but she has a history of allergy and respiratory problems. Her body's reaction to the venom could be more dangerous than the tissue damage. The side effects of these kind of snake bites, sometimes patients develop bleeding problems and low blood pressure and things right. like that. So let us know if your pain is getting any worse. Do you mind just leaning forward for me? Thank you. Okay, and take some nice deep breaths, please. As well as the local swelling, the venom can affect nerves throughout the body. Do you have any numbness or tingling anywhere? It's swelling off, but I have those on my face. In your face? Things, yeah. Facial paresthesias. Mm -hmm. Okay. That started after the snake bite? Oh, like five minutes after. Uh -huh. First in my lips, and it went up, and then very heavy on top, like if I had something very uh -huh. tight. Uh -huh. like very tight on the forehead. We're going to give you a few more doses of anti-venom, okay, okay. and then tomorrow I'll return okay. and discharge you, assuming everything goes well, OK? okay. I trust Great. you. All right, <laughs> all right. But 12 minutes later, the asthma attack they were expecting arrives. Christine needs help with her breathing. This could be because of the stress associated with the snake bite, or it could be a mild adverse reaction to the antivenom. But uh, she's not having any of the signs of allergic reactions, so I think it's probably just the stress. Being bitten by an animal, especially a venomous one, is a real shock. It releases hormones that can complicate the reaction to the venom. Snake bite cases are never simple. And so little is known about Southern California's rattlesnakes. So another team member, Mike Cardwell, is studying the Mojave rattlesnake, the most infamous of all the species. It lives out in the high desert, but people are settling here too. As the sun goes down, the desert cools, and the snakes come above ground to hunt. Mike's aim is to catch one, but in the dusk, they're near invisible. Mike will have to be very cautious. In the dark, a rattlesnake can sense body heat and human scent. Mike relies on his eyesight, but it's backed up by 40 years of experience and knowledge. You know, we need to look everywhere, but in particular at the base of the bushes. In fact, here's one right here. Here is a nice adult. Uh, I'm not sure if, if this is a snake that I've seen before or it's a new one. And we won't know until we see his rattle, see if there's paint in his rattle. But let me get some light on the situation here. So Mike marks every snake he collects with harmless acrylic paint. This one's rattle is clean. It's a first encounter. And what we'll do here, Hopefully, drop him in this bag. 
without too much trouble. He needs to judge the temperament of the snake just three feet away. Come here, pretty boy. And very typical behavior, he's trying to get away. He's not being aggressive or even very defensive right now. So I haven't really alarmed him yet. Ideally, I'll get him to drop in this bag before I do. Bagging a snake requires Mike's unique okay, so experience. Will... It's tricky, That's even for an expert. So the bags are, are easy and lightweight to transport around. The downside to the bags is the snakes can bite through them. So, so what I typically do is transport the snake back in my fanny pack. And that works well once I get the snake in there. But getting him in. Oop, there's the snake's head right. Actually touched my finger, which is not a good idea. It's a whole bag with the snake. In there if he'll cooperate, which he's not. There we go, I think. So that is that. Now the key is to remember that there's a rattlesnake in there if I need something else out of the bag. It's mission safely accomplished. In the ER, Christine's also had a good night. Thanks for your patience. How's, how's your wounds looking? It's wonderful. It's, you can say wonderful. It's pretty swollen. Let's yeah, wish her the got, leg. It got down, though. OK. It got down from last night. It's oh, not kinda, as tight. Kind of bruised here. Yeah. Well, listen, I got some written discharge instructions for you to follow. I think you're going to be good to go. But I want, I want Dory to go through those with you and to explain everything to you in detail. Please let me know if, if you have questions. I'd like to see you again in a few days, OK? Right. OK. The question, what would happen if I get beat a second time? Am we can I'm still immune? treat you. Yeah. No, you're, not? you're not immune. So it'd be the same thing as the first time? If you get bitten a second time, it could happen just like this or worse. Okay. We'd still need to treat you with antivenom, and we could still could treat you with antivenom. Okay. But the doctors that are treating you uh, would need to know that you had received antivin before because right. you could have allergic reaction. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Don't get bitten again, though. I'm not though. planning on it, no. Watch out for snakes, okay? Yes, I will. Thank you, doctor. Sean's scheduled for surgery on a very special patient, the male Mojave rattlesnake Mike caught last night. It's now under anesthetic, ready to be fitted with a tiny radio transmitter. It will feed Mike vital information about its behavior, so mustn't hinder the snake or change its behavior at all. It's a delicate, painstaking procedure that taxes both men's skills with snakes. Will this one survive to return to the wild? Find out when Venom ER returns. To track wild snakes in the desert, individuals are tagged with a radio transmitter by Sean's colleague, Mike Cardwell. Stick that in the belly. Just to kind of monitor the level of anesthesia here on a snake, because of their skin covering, you gotta look in their mouth, look at the color of their gums. And gum color's a little gray, but he's breathing. His trachea is open, so, so far so good. Maybe push the bottom of that loop up, so. OK. OK, suture time. Suture time. And what we'll do here is just insert uh, this little catheter into the end of his trachea. And we'll just give him a little cheek puff till his ribs rise. All that does is helps evacuate that uh, inhalation anesthetic that we gave him. Anesthesia is a precise art. This is a tense moment. 
Got a little chest rise. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here's the real chest of the transmitter. It's working well. So we'll just finish the procedure. The final step is to inject that non-toxic paint into the rattle with a color code that identifies this individual male. Big breasts. Good. Now, even a chance visual contact becomes part of the record, and our understanding of the snakes grows. This one is ready to go take its place in the wild as a dangerous predator. Present. It's Memorial Day weekend, the first big holiday of the summer. A chance to get out and celebrate, or simply remember. But the crews of Mercy Air are on standby, awaiting the call that sends the helicopters into action. Mercy Air 1, Steve. Canyon facility from Eisenhower to Loma Linda. OK, yeah. Spider bite. All right, thanks. This is a special call for flight nurse Steve Ellis. The victim is 31 weeks pregnant. It's a complex case needing the whole Venom ER team. Flight Commander 1, we're about to uh, ice now for the spider bite. Was Dr. Bush there by any chance? I haven't seen him here today, but I know he was contacted about the spider bite. Copy that. Um, we'll see you guys probably about an hour or so. Yeah. I've seen aircraft on before. It's a 20 minute flight from their base to the first hospital. They'll need a fast turnaround. Hillary Hildebrandt was bitten by a black widow spider at her parents' home in Palm Springs. This is a very different case for the team. They're less concerned in treating the patient sitting in the helicopter than the one inside Hillary. Most people survive black widow spider envenomation. It's the baby I'm worried about. She's pregnant, and black widow spider bite has been known to cause people to miscarry, to lose the pregnancy, and, and this would be the worst case scenario for her. They explained to you why we're flying? Yep. What did they tell you? Just that uh, they wanted to get me there faster and monitor. Yeah, the reason being is just to take every precaution for the baby, because even though it may not be toxic for you, per se, it don't have to be more toxic for the baby. But they're saying, you know, if, if the worst case scenario happens, they can always deliver the baby, because the baby's in, you know, even though it'd be early, the baby is, is would be plenty fine right now. So. Space inside the chopper is limited, so Hillary's husband, Mike, follows by car. Steve's aim is to keep Hillary calm as the helicopter speeds toward treatment in the ER. Good afternoon, Loma Linda University Medical Center, Mercy Air One inbound with the facility. How do you copy? Air One, this is Loma Linda. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Loma Linda University Mercy Air One. We're currently in view of a 32, 32 year old female weighing approximately 80 kilograms. Uh, currently, we have a heart rate of 90. Science rhythm on the monitor without any ventricular activity. Current blood pressure is 102 over 51. 102 over 51. And we also have the spider on board that's in a sealed bottle, as well as wrapped. It appears to be a small black widow spider. How do you copy? Hillary starts to have contractions. A slight what? A slight pinch. Does it increase my push on it or anything? No, okay. Is it real painful? It's quite concerning that she's having contractions because she's only 31 weeks pregnant and baby's not quite ready to come out. After 35 minutes in the air, it's over. It's an immense relief for Steve. Sean Bush is waiting on the helipad. Now they can start dealing with the venom in Hillary's body. Your left lower abdomen there. Thirty-one weeks. Almost see a little fang puncture there, right in there. 
The team is joined by obstetric nurse Sarah Para. Half an hour or so around there. But you say the twinge is kind of on the left, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's a very slight pinching. This is a tricky case. There's nothing in the textbooks. Sean must decide whether to give Hillary anti-venom, and he must make the choice absolutely clear to her. Black widow spider bite can kill you. Um, the anti-venom can kill you, but it can also resolve the symptoms promptly. Um, it protects the baby, but at the same time, we don't know, we haven't tested it in pregnancy, so we don't know if the anti-venom is safe in pregnancy. And the problem is that sometimes uh, the black widow spider by itself can cause preterm pre labor, cause you to even have problems with labor. But right now, I don't think that you need anti-venom, but I just want you to know that we have that available to us. Sometimes it can take symptoms a long time to progress. So what you'd be, what you'd be looking for is abdominal cramping, yeah. chest pain, back pain, okay. muscle cramping, or uterine contractions. Okay. If you have that, then, uh, then we'll then let us know. Okay. You don't feel s s sweatier than usual or anything no, like that? I feel okay. All right. Since the spider bite, she's got a new little twinge in her left side. And on the fetal monitor, we can see little contractions in her uterus. So we're quite worried about that. We want to make sure that uh, those don't progress, because if they do, we're going to have to give her antivenom so she doesn't have this baby. The team has some crucial decisions to make when Venom ER returns. Than most, Expectant mother Hillary Hildebrandt has been bitten by a black widow spider. Trapped by her husband, it's flown with her into the Venom ER. Yeah, that's definitely an immature black widow spider. And Sean has the experience to handle her safely. And, and the thing is she weighs less than one thirtieth of an ounce, but her venom has got the team worried. The unique mark of the Black Widow is this red hourglass. The team are inventing a new procedure, but waiting for the venom to progress is making everyone a little nervous. I think we did the right thing. That, yeah, that's, that looks for real because, um, you know, I, I had a spider bite when I was a kid that it didn't look like it was anything, and I developed cellulitis that I had to, they had to take me to the operating room when I was about six years old. I don't know what kind of spider it was. Scar there, huh? Yeah, that's the scar. My hand was yeah. about double the size. So. Wow. Sean's edgy, and so is Hillary's obstetric nurse, Sarah Para. I'm really concerned that the contractions are um, closer together than what we anticipate for a 31-weeker. Um, it could um, have future problems if we can let it continue. Um, we could deliver a premature baby, and that's not something that we want to do at this point. If her symptoms progress and she starts to have serious abdominal cramping and or uterine contractions, then we're, we're going to seriously consider giving her antivenom. The irritability is gone, but there's, she's still having contractions. So I've called for one of the OB docs to come in. With Hillary's husband, Mike, now present, more obstetric expertise is called in. This is a new challenge for everyone, including the parents. Uh, it was just almost like a mosquito bite, a, sh a bit sharper. And uh, I just went to wipe it away with my hand because it felt sharp. And that's when my husband noticed the spider. Well, I, I've never really been up close to a black widow. So when I flicked it out of the water, I cupped it. And then I figured I might as well transport it to the hospital so that they could figure out what exactly it was. We just want to make sure that the baby's doing well. So we're going to do an ultrasound. We're going to check the baby, check the placenta. And if all that's OK, then hopefully 
It, the venom has not affected the fetus. Well, apparently the peak of the symptoms, according to Dr. Bush, could occur around four to six hours. I okay. guess you're about to hit the mark, but you're not in too much pain, which is good. No. So we'll just take a quick look at the baby. <laughs> this is Dr. Collins. She is our attending here in charge. This is a first for the maternity team, too. They've checked out the case histories and come up empty. Damage to the placenta is their prime concern. One of the worries that we were learning about was that the placenta could get a clot and start shearing off, but there's no sign of that, obviously. Look at that, baby's breathing great. Oh, I can feel a baby moving around now. Yeah. There's the heart of the baby. Looks like everything's stable for now. So we're going to get you up to labor and delivery and watch you. Okay. Make sure that you're going to do okay. We're going to watch you for at least overnight. Well, the ultrasound was very reassuring because it showed that the placenta was looked great. Um, there was no tearing away from the uterine wall, which is called a brachial placenta. Uh, baby looked good. Baby didn't look like the baby was in any distress, moving around, heart was beating normally. And so it's very reassuring. Um, right now, I think we're going to hold off on the antivenom. Uh, we're going to keep her overnight and do some external fetal monitoring just to make sure the baby does fine. And if she does worse, uh, OBGYN is going to page me and we're going to talk about giving antivenom again. All right. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we're going to let you go upstairs pretty soon. Cool. And so basically all it is now is just a little bit of monitoring. Okay. I think we're going to be able to hold off on giving the antivenom, which is a good thing which is a good thing. But if you get worse, I'm available by pager, and uh, we'll make that decision to give antivenom if we need to. Okay. All right? Any more questions? Or? No, we're good. Thank you very much for your help. All right. Sure. Take Thanks. care. Yeah, see you. All right, see you. The team has seen Hillary through her trauma. She'll be kept under observation by the specialists in the maternity unit. But the danger has passed. Thank you very much. The ER goes back to more normal business, but soon, the next emergency is underway. San Bernardino Sheriff's Air Division has had a call to a snake bite, but can only respond with a doctor on board. Station 4, Atlanta Base. Mm -hmm. Copy. Uh, we'll uh, rendezvous up with uh, Air Rescue 305. They're heading for the hospital to pick up Sean, even though he's just joined their team. It's a leap into the unknown, coming up on Animal Planet. With Sheriff's Air on their way, Sean has to be ready to join them. Drugs and equipment are raided from the ER, so he can treat a snake bite in the field for the first time. Probably an incident happened. You coming on to the air rescue ship made some ALS. Okay, and then they could transport. Is it Sheriff's Air? Sheriff's Air. And okay. you being a new member, it's time to get you up in there. I guess so. Well, let's go. Have fun. All right. We're going to South <laughs> Well, I'm going to go pick up this kid in the field with a snake bite. Evidently, Sheriff's Air Rescue uh, wanted to pick me up and take me out to the kid. I'm going to grab some antivenom to go and start it in the field, which uh, we've never done before. So I'm going to go. Here's everything you need, Doctor. Thanks, Frank. So with a bag of antivenom and pain medication, he's ready to go on his first case outside the ER. The call is to a seven-year-old boy up in the mountains 20 miles to the north. The sheriff's air rescue ship will be the key to Sean's mission, getting anti-venom treatment started as soon as possible after the bite. But there's a surprise in store. The patient isn't seven, but 70. Donald Feenstra. A simple confusion on the radio has given Sean a very different case. The snake is... is down there at the cabin, yeah. Okay. Get back, come in there.
This won't be an easy first case. Donald's feeling nauseous even before takeoff. You have a medical problem? I have diabetes. Okay. And I had a heart attack a year and a half ago. Gotcha. It's a major setback on his first field mission. Sean faces a huge challenge, all on his own. With Donald on board, the helicopter takes off. Now Sean has to decide on the treatment. The team mixes up the Crofab. It will be hard to administer here, but at the very least, it will be ready to go when they reach the ER. As the precious minutes tick by, the venom is progressing in Donald's body. But fortunately, Loma Linda comes into view and the helicopter touches down in the safety of the hospital. Now, Sean's entire team can swing into action. A little lightheaded. Yeah, that was one of the funnest things I ever did in my entire life. Was it? It's a great start for Sean. Air medicine has a long way to go, but he's learned a lot. Yeah. He's got a past medical history of having heart disease, but he's just got a fang puncture wound or two on his uh, middle finger there. What time did the bite happen? An hour ago. Let's get the, I, I mixed the four vials of Crofab in that bag right there. Let's start it. Oh, yeah. But we're just about to start this medicine. It's, it's an anti-venom for snake bite. There's risks, of course, involved with snake bite. There's also risks involved with anti-venom. So far, there haven't been any severe allergic reactions or adverse reactions associated with this anti-venom, but they could be. Obviously, you have your opinion about what I should do. Yes, I do. And that is take the anti-venom. I recommend anti-venom. We'll do it. All right. Past treatments came with a big risk of reaction, but these are much reduced in Crofab, and it will stop the venom progression. Even if the envenomation is mild, I'd rather start anti-venom rather than wait until after the damage is already done. Because once the damage is already done, it's hard to reverse that damage. Not bad at Would all. you like some pain medicine? No. OK. We're going to keep a close eye on you if you have any pain. Okay, sir? Very good. Thank okay, you. OK, very good. Now, Sean needs to know more about the bite itself. Did you, did you see the snake before it bit you? Yeah. But you, re you reached out to do what? To pick up the snake you or to? Know, I don't remember what I did. I just. Sure, sure. Yeah. We got this anti-venom going, and I just wanted to know if you're having any any signs of allergic reaction. Meaning, uh, it's kind of like you to take a look, take a listen to his lungs, and. Actually, I feel fine, you except feel fine? Uh, for my finger and my hand where you have these. If you're not getting a rash. Be sure and look at the skin for rash. Look at his oral pharynx for. For angioedema, and uh, listen to his lungs for wheezing. Sean also needs lab tests to check on the venom in Donald's bloodstream. No, what I want is fibrinogen, no FSP, okay. CBC, PT, PDT, INR. Okay. Now, did you do any first aid? All the only, all I did was squeeze it, it bled some, and I tried to squeeze out as much blood as possible. It all went quite fast. I want to just double check and see how many fang punctures you got. Did you, do you think you got one or two? Well, the, I got one on this up here for sure. That was the one that bled the most, and, and the one down here in this blood a little bit. I can just barely see that one. I see a puncture here. Yeah, that's a puncture, just one puncture. And you said you had two, though, one yeah, up here. Yeah, one up here, here, and it bled the most, right in here somewhere. So let's yeah. measure that, OK? I'm gonna measure between fang punctures here. It looks it looks like small snake. Yeah. Okay. But 12 to 18 inches. The team are trying to figure out the snake's size from the fang spread to provide an early idea of the severity of the bite. This one looks pretty mild. But Sean has made a real step forward in treatment. The helicopter was a difficult environment for me. I was trying to, to mix the crofab while we were in transport uh, and it's kind of difficult you don't have a desk space and so um, and I wasn't just totally prepared for this today I didn't come to work thinking I was gonna have a helicopter ride finally Donald's son Chris brings the snake in hey, hey. all right thanks for bringing him in 
Sure enough, that's the It's extraordinary that a 200-pound man could be hospitalized by something this small. But that is the power of rattlesnake venom. And then I'll put him in that formalin. We brought the snake in. They brought the snake in. It helps us with our study. Well, he's got a button on him. You see a little button on the tail? Okay. It's a fascinating close-up encounter for Kelly Westcott. Unfortunate snake. Here we go. He's about 30 centimeters snout fan at length. So someone told me today that like baby snake bites are a little more dangerous because they deliver all their venom with their bite, and adult snakes deliver a smaller dose or something like that. Yeah. Is that true? It's not true. It's the <laughs> most. I thought, well, I know who to ask. <laughs> it's the most popular urban legend about snakes. Uh, and what it is, is actually the baby rattlesnakes only deliver about one to three milligrams of venom, mm -hmm. whereas an adult snake can deliver anywhere from 30 to 300 milligrams of venom. Now the monitors are going off. You feel dizzy or not? Yeah, just, just that went down feel to good, right? the. Uh, 94 for a little bit, and then it bumped up again. Stop being fugitive for a sec. Donald's really sick. They have to oh. act immediately, adapting the treatment as they go. Okay. Hang in there, it's sir. another unique snake bite case coming to a climax on Venom ER. Donald Feenstra is sick, reacting to the anti-venom that's supposed to be saving him. The team must adapt their treatment. Hey, Scott. Hi. What's a possible adverse reaction here? Watch it. Reactions like this were common with the old anti-venom, okay, but this fine. reaction to Crofab is another first for Sean. You better get me a bag It's the day's most alarming one. His blood pressure looks OK. A little flush to you. Yeah. But every bite is different. Every body is different. And there's something in Donald that's reacting to the anti-venom. It's hard to know if it's a venom effect or if it's an adverse reaction because he was nauseated from the snake bite uh, in the field. Right on the scene, he said he was nauseated. But uh, the red and redness and flushing makes me think uh, he could be having an adverse reaction to this anti-venom. Right? We'll reassess the need to continue if, uh, if it looks like he's going to have an adverse reaction to it. And right now, he's just got minimal swelling. Yeah. And we how much the venom has evaded the treatment, and inside Donald's body, it searches for a weakness. Are you going to throw up? I don't know. Boy, I sure, don't like, I sure don't like to be this low. Can you put me back up? Or yeah, what? certainly. A little bit up. Although they've stopped the Crofab, the team continue with his other sure. medications. Oh, boy. Okay, Benadryl, Good. Yeah. Tagamid. Oh, and up. Right. Okay. What, what do we have? Benadryl? Yeah, get it is right here. Oh. oh. Kathy, 50, or Marie, 50 Benadryl. Okay. Hang in there, sir. No, oh, okay. This will pass. With heart trouble and diabetes part of Donald's profile, it's a difficult case to treat. Marie, you said his blood sugar was what? 73. 73. Your flushing's gone away. You know the flushing's gone? These are anxious moments for the team. Okay. We're going to be watching him, and it's going to be real important to watch for progression, because right now we're going to hold off on the answer to him until we see progression because we think he might have had an adverse reaction to the crow fab. Pretty rare. Remember how I was told you that you Once again, Sean's inventing a new treatment as he goes. It's a very steep learning curve. We're going to watch you here for a long time, for many hours, and see if it progresses. If it progresses, we may still 
have to give you anti-venom, but we'll just have to pre-medicate you and be real careful about that. This is the most severe adverse reaction I've seen to Profab so far. Now, when I use the old anti-venom, we would see this kind of reaction routinely. In fact, we saw much more severe reactions. Um, and fortunately, this, this reaction uh, resolved fairly quickly with med medication, but I just don't think it's worth the risk of starting at it again. Even now, anti-venoms aren't the perfect treatment for a venomous bite. But in the ER, Donald's reaction was handled immediately. 24 hours later, he was ready to be discharged. I just want to thank you and everybody else. That really uh, was a fast response. Everybody treated me very well here, too. And Sean's decision not to give Hillary any anti-venom also proved correct. Nine weeks later, she gave birth to baby Braden Hildebrand, thanks to the constant inventiveness of the Venom ER team. We were, we were very lucky that things didn't go from bad to worse. It was, uh, it was a scary situation to go through, and it was very dramatic and everything. And the whole time that we went through it, I kept the only thing I kept thinking is about the baby, is do we take the antivenom? Will it hurt the baby? I look back and I think of the people that were there to help us, reassured us that you know it was going to be all right. They were good at keeping us fairly calm and just being realistic about the situation, as opposed to panicking. <laughs> he appreciated it too. <laughs>